Hi, everybody. Welcome to Radio Labyrinth. This is the Radio Labyrinth podcast. It is season eight, episode 38. We just finished wrapping up our Patreon only show. And it was uh, very funny. It was the most insensitive <laughs> Patreon show of all time. As we made fun of so somebody. Join Patreon and listen to it. Died a hundred years ago. I don't know when she was alive. But we're not going to say her name because we don't want her family to get upset. <laughs> Let's just say that if you have a problem with um, people making fun of the blind, don't listen to the Patreon. We're not making fun of blind people at all. We're making fun of dumb people in the literal old <laughs> sense. Because you can't say that. You can't use that term anymore. It's not sensitive. You know, it's it's lame. If somebody can't speak, you got to say they're dumb. That's not cool. Is it? No. You say they're mute. Uh, no, the mute can't possibly be. Anyway, we're not going to drag that into the nonverbal. Show. They're nonverbal. Yeah, they're nonverbal. Like mm, that was nonverbal. And you, if you're watching, you know what I just did. You did say you never saw Jose Feliciano's guitar, though. No, I didn't. I did not. Either see. Ah, Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. It's almost Christmas time. We're getting there. We're you know Halloween's almost here. Uh, and, uh, if you're, if you're looking for something to do around the first fall holiday that people really, you know, embrace Atlanta pizza in Euro, we're having our Halloween party on the 22nd of October. That is a Sunday, 1 PM for Patreon members, 2 PM for everybody else. So don't get there early and sit outside, you know, playing with yourself while the Patreons are in there. And by the way, the, you know, the, uh, the glory hole is gone. So don't, you know, arrive expecting that to be available to you. Um, so maybe yeah. maybe Tim Allen could set up like a mobile glory hole out in the parking lot. That's what he does for a living. Yeah. I think he told him he did <laughs> glory holes. <laughs> <Pop-up hole. laughs> yeah, we you know we're, we we have a pop up glory hole shop. Uh, it's right now it's rickety because most of it is plywood that we have repurposed. Right, you find plywood at a dump or at a construction site when it's nighttime. And then you, you know, you get a saw and you cut a hole in it and you sand it because if somebody's going to be using it. You just put duct tape all around. Yeah, duct duct tape on the other side. I mean, no, duct tape is a visual thing, but sand it because you could get splinters, right, Steph? Yeah, wasn't this, uh, didn't this Bronson Pinch show, wasn't this on Ray Donovan where wasn't he sticking his junk into just homemade glory holes or something? When was Bronson Pinch show on Ray Donovan? He was on there, yeah. Really? Yeah, I don't, I don't like remember that. Start. He was more like a. He was only like in the first one or two episodes, but yeah, he was. That was one of the things. Well, he played a played an actor yeah, that yeah. Ray had to get. When Ray fix. was like a Hollywood fixer in the first season, or when it was good, yeah. and I loved it. Yeah. Yeah, my son uh, is going to a girls' school. Okay. <laughs> um. So yeah, we'll be there, and we're gonna have a raffle for prizes. I don't think we're gonna record a show because that never. Uh, I think we should try. Yeah, it never seems to work out. Well, uh, John Mark says he's going to bring all this stuff to be able to record. So I don't want him to do all that and then have it sound horrible. When you're live, and I know this from radio, when you're live and you do a show and you record it, it never sounds as good as it is the show. And plus, we don't have video. So no, he's he's got video too. Really? Well, yeah. Orn? No, he's got capabilities to record video. We're going to try to have guests there. The ones we've. Two of the ones we've asked have said they're busy, and I understand that. Uh, but there is one who may show up, and I'm going to touch base with him this week. Anyway, but we'll have fun. We'll have trivia. We'll have a raffle, whatever. We are going to have prizes. There will be a copy of Aqua Teen Hunger Force, uh, the, the 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 last movie. The name eludes me at this moment, but it's unopened. It'll be a Blu-ray. And then there'll be the other things. I'll have a, a signed drawing that I did. It's a print of Stephen King, the, the Dark Tower one that I, I'm proud of. That no one likes, but I like it. So it's I gonna like be that one. And I think yeah. we'll have we may have pictures with Redbox as well. Oh yeah, we'll do pictures with Redbox. Are you gonna get a costume for Redbox? He's already a costume. Mm-hmm. And he'll be my costume. And I can't wait to annoy Steph with the the voice the whole time. So anyway, if you'd like to become a radio drunk, I won't notice. <laughs> That's true. Radio Labyrinth uh Patreon member, just go to patreon.com forward slash Tim Andrews like. Rate and review us on Spotify. And if you sign up at the $25 or uh, above level, then you are a producer and you'll get your name read right now. Tim Slayton, Brian and Chelsea Smith, Jeff Peterson, Jim Fortner, Terry Fuller, Chris Chandler, Roby Neely, Kevin Jackson, Mike D, and Matt Cotta. You will get a doodle from me or a print of a doodle from me and uh, stickers and, and the weekly shout out and a shirt that we will make for you and send to your house. 
and you're working on a new shirt site, right? Yes, Dustin said he was working on. Them. Yeah, I'm I'm working on one right now. It's actually more than shirts. It's going to have a, a bunch of stuff. So look yeah, out for that cool. soon. Highlighters, yeah, highlighters, regular oh, lighters, dilators, <laughs> dilators. Sure, we'll throw mm-hmm. those in too. Yeah, I mean, if you don't if you don't put it in there, it's going to seal up on you. Hey, we have a guest coming up. I'm sure they want to be next to this, but uh, coming up on this week's show, uh, Broin Lawler, who's related to Dustin Lawler somehow. And uh, Paul, what's Paul's last name? Janeway. Janeway. Janeway? Mm -hmm. Like the captain from Star Trek. Paul Janeway. Yep. Yep. Cool. They are uh, respectively the lead guitarist and uh, singer for St. Paul and the Broken Bones. And uh, they have an exciting show coming up in the Atlanta area. And we'll talk about the rest of their tour as well. Um, So, yeah, if you want to become a patron, that's what you do. Yeah. All that. And you get access to our Patreon only show uh, at any level. Too hot for regular YouTube. Yeah, too hot for regular YouTube. Mm. <laughs> it's bad. All right. Speaking of hot, uh, Travis Kelsey, baby. You think he's this Travis Kelsey uh, Taylor Swift thing is real, or do you think it's all marketing? Do you think it's marketing? Do you think it's real? I don't know. I think it might be real. Yeah. yeah. I think it's dumb, I think it's dumb enough to be real. Yeah. I yeah. yeah. won't shut up about it. Uh, the game the other day, they just kept cutting to her. See here, I have a conspiracy. And I think that he is a spokesperson for Pfizer. And, you know, right about now is when, you know, they need people to go get the jabs because it's that time of year when, you know, things spread like Taylor Swift does. And Taylor Swift is getting people to vote. So they're both positive members of the community, getting people to sign up to vote, getting people to get their jabs. Those things are super important for the most part. And then they're together at a game. Now, what does that do? That brings Taylor Swift fans to the NFL. So those eyeballs that might not necessarily uh, be on TV, you know, we're from a different generation, uh, the older people on this show. So, you know, it was always like you'd go with your buddies and watch football and, uh, you know, nowadays everybody watches it. Everybody in the household, even the four-year-old girl, just loves football. That's why she goes to the wherever with her um, Steve Christie jersey on because she's that big of a Bills fan, right? Steve Christie, yeah. right? right. Um, so we live in a different era. So I think it's all marketing. Um, you know, th- when they left the game that they were at the other night, he was wearing one of her dumbass denim outfits. You know, that's like inspired by um, Taylor Swift. I just don't buy these things anymore. I think everything is marketing. Everything's designed to manipulate you. Everything's de- designed to get you to, to pay attention to things other than the game. And I didn't think anybody could be more annoying than uh, than Patrick Mahomes' brother. But here we go. When it comes to the Chiefs. But anyway, that's my opinion. Do you think it's a ploy? She's such a big Eagles fan that she's going to have him for the season and then right towards the end of the season, she's going to dump him just so that he won't catch a ball. Yeah, right before the playoffs. Yeah. But yeah. Perfectly, he, they wouldn't play the Eagles in the playoffs. And I've heard that conspiracy also, but um, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, what good is it going to do if they don't make it all the way? Besides, everybody with a brain and, and a pair of eyes, which means everybody but the person we talked about on our Patreon show, also was dead, so it wouldn't matter. <laughs> but Miami Dolphins are gonna are absolutely going to be unbeatable this year absolutely going to win it all that's my i don't think they'll lose one game this year unless something happens to to a and then it's pretty much plug and play they have three great wide receivers they've got tight ends they have great running backs and a great defense and their coach is all about speed so anyway that's our football talk steph you want to see what we see we'll yeah see. i'll weigh in i'll weigh in they, they beat the shit out of the falcons i mean not like the shit but they beat no but they beat them they beat it it was solid yeah, i like it was a solid solid beat so here we got green bay on thursday so Short week. Yeah. Hoping they can uh, go ahead and put it down that they are the kings of the north. Now they're playing this week. So when people watch or listen to this, it'll be post uh, whoever they play. They play Green Bay? Yeah, Green, Green Bay. Bay on Thursday. Yeah. That's an old school uh, rivalry. Green Bay, not what it was, but still their quarterback is pretty good. No It is. Aaron Rodgers sitting on his ass in California. Yeah, lo- I'm loving life, I'm sure. Well, uh, speaking of uh, Michigan and Detroit, Michigan's government employees can now smoke weed, right? That's what they're saying, that they're not going to drug test them, which... Why bother? Everybody in the fucking state is high. 
That's it. If it's legal in your state, there's no reason they should test for it. So they don't test for alcohol. But a private company has a right to do what they want, right? They do, but it's not, it isn't cool that they would test for it when it's legal. Yeah. When so you want to know do your that. doctor isn't stoned. No, I want my doctor to be stoned. I buy. Mm-hmm. You want your train conductor or the guy that's doing air traffic control to be high? Yeah, this place is all right. Look at <laughs> but the government I they don't do shit anyway so what does it matter if they're high to use responsibly like they do like you do with alcohol you mean at home right but yeah, not on but, your own time right some part of me wishes it would be illegal again in most states because you can't go anywhere without it stinking but it's illegal here you can't go anywhere without smelling it here either especially and you're gonna say I can't go to go to work and clock in and then go in the bathroom and shoot heroin right the fuck where does it mushrooms? Stop? A lot of a lot of states. Well, where does it stop? Everything. If you're a libertarian, everything should be legal. And you should be able to buy cocaine at Kroger. Yeah. In a, in the cocaine aisle or heroin. Uh, sure. What they need to do is shut that fucking border. Get that border shut down. Shut down the border. Shut down borders. Bookstores. Too late. <laughs> shut down Barnes and Noble. They yeah. still have a few Barnes and Nobles around. I know they do. They don't have any borders. Borders are just gone. Walden books, gone. All the good bookstores are gone. And it's because we've had a porous border for 40 years and all these people come in and take our book jobs. And they've taken all of our book jobs and now we don't have places to sell books. They still have the adult bookstore in Elmira. They do. And I pranked them. <laughs> yeah, I went into Ollie's discount something and yeah. like half the whole front half of the store is all books. Nobody buys books. No one buys books. Everybody listens to books. Books are things that, I, you know, people who collect books or people who actually like to read and have books in their hand. But we all listen to audio books for the most part. Right? People aren't buying There's still a lot of book people, but I think they're getting them from Amazon. Yeah. But I just want the book people to know. You can go to Ollie's because I saw a lot of book of files in there. And they were all reading the book. I don't trust that guy's mustache at Ollie's. <laughs> So now that the strike is over in Hollywood, things can get back to normal. I know that the writer strike is over. Has the SAG after strike ended yet? No. So that'll go on forever. Yeah, they they haven't even started negotiations with them. But now that the writer strike has ended, that sets a good precedent for for the actors to to get back to the table. Does this mean that Bill Mark can go and do a show now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, he only pulled out for one day. He was like, no, we're not going to do it, just like everybody wants. And as soon as they said they were coming to the table, he was like, okay, back on. So he's trying to Force 5 is over now, though. The what? Uh, that Strike Force 5 podcast. Oh, no. <laughs> well, they said they're coming back for one more next week. No, they, they have 12 recorded, and there's only eight released so far, maybe nine. So it's just they should never stop doing it. They should never stop doing it. But they're going back on the air starting on October. The only thing that I would like better than that one is if, like, Jake Tapper and Rachel Maddow and Wolf Blitzer did one, and they talked about their favorite 70s porn movies. Oh, fun. <laughs> Throw in a uh, Coda, whatever her name is, and... Ah, uh, she's a drunk. Leave her alone. <laughs> no one cares about NBC. I'm just talking about these cable people that think they're so important. Moonlighting coming to streaming. Is this the first time it's streamed? Yeah, ever. Yeah. Oh, I'm watching that. What's the Moonlight. problem with it? The music license? I don't know what the problem was. Was it because it was owned by Disney? Yeah, I believe so. They, they they've been they've released a a box set of it like ten years ago or something. But that was the only release they ever had, and it's never been on streaming before. So you know, you get to see all those cool intro. I always loved that show. It was yeah, I did best written shows. Yeah. What do you think the music? The like Al Jarreau's family had it locked up. They wouldn't. Oh, I mean, they had music in their show. They like a lot of boomer music. It was a boomer show that Gen Xers watched. I loved it. I loved staying up late and watching it because I thought Bruce Willis was cool. Oh, I had the major, major crushy, as much as an, a nine-year-old could have a crush on a grown man. Then he had that stupid album, the song, the blue song. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was awful. The return. Oh, but his Seagram's commercials, they they rocked. Seagram's gold my coolers. Look here. Seagram's. Our 
remember that. Thank you for putting it in my head now. <laughs> Did I tell the story of meeting Al Jarreau at the airport in Atlanta? No. I love Al Jarreau. I was going to, this must have been 90, in 97 or 98. It was before Jeff moved here. I was going to the uh, airport to pick up my friend Larry, who was coming down to visit. And I went and there were storms that night. So his flight was delayed. It was flying around the city waiting for the storms to end. And I, I was in the cigarette back in civilized days. There was a, uh, there was a, before this Matt Westmoreland piece of shit, city council dick. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, got rid of cigarette smoking. They had places in Atlanta and almost every concourse where you could go. It was like a fishbowl filled with smoke and people coughing and burning cigarettes in the ashtrays that they never empty. And I'm sitting there smoking, waiting, waiting, waiting. And I look to my left and there's this guy smoking cigarettes, like literally chain smoking. And I'm looking at him. I go, that guy, I know that guy, that guy. And I looked at him and I started making the small talk about, is your flight delayed? And he goes, yeah, I'm waiting. And I go, aren't you Al Jarreau? <laughs> he, he goes, yes. <laughs> and I said, I said, I'm not going to bother you because, you know, you're a celebrity and you look tired and everything. I go, but it just surprises me that someone with such a beautiful voice as yours is a smoker. And he just went, yeah, I know. That was it. It was the extent of our conversation. I didn't ask for his autograph. I didn't want to bother him or anything. I just wish you would have just turned to him and went, some fly by night. <laughs> just started singing it to him. Some fly by <laughs> <laughs> So you're not excited for the Office reboot? Oh, yeah. I forgot to talk about that. The Office reboot. I don't reboot. know. If Steve Carell isn't going to be in it, then no. They haven't said all that. They've said Krasinski has talked about like he might be interested in whatever but the show is Carell and when he left it was over so if he's not coming back and I'm assuming what they're going to do is probably have uh, the majority of them hybrid working from home mm -hmm. so that way that's how they could probably maybe get some of the bigger stars to come back you know which really think Carell's the biggest nobody else is really doing anything now except for podcasts about the show why would anybody <laughs> Go back. I mean, if you did a Cheers reboot, at least the bars are still in existence. But who sells paper? From no one. That was a lightning in the bottle. I mean, it was one right. of those shows. You can't. Re they can't reuse it, that. Greg Daniels' di thing was he, he he wanted to just do different different offices, not just oh. a paper company. Like okay. one could be in a hospital, or one could be. At a hardware store or whatever, and that's basically what our superstore kind of happened. I don't. The office was because of Carell. That's, yeah, that's it why was, people it watch it over and over. There. And yeah. he's well, so. The one thing we don't have enough of are sitcoms. We just don't have <laughs> none that are funny. Well, yeah, that's true. Hey, uh, the it, one thing I forgot to plug: the Popcast is back this week. There's an episode. And uh, one guest I've already spoken to, and I have another one, so I don't want to plug it because I don't know if it's going to happen, but I spoke with John Zoller. He is the executive producer of the Exhibition Hub Art Center, which is in Doraville. In case you're not familiar with Doraville, it's in Northeast Atlanta. Uh, if you are here in the city and you know Doraville, Doraville has undergone a complete renaissance. There's new housing going up there. NBC Studios has a place there. A lot of shopping, a lot of food. Plus you have the most diverse stretch of highway, the Buford Highway, can, uh, Buford Highway is the most diverse food uh, place uh, in the entire city. There's so many different types of food you can try. Most of them Asian, from different Asian countries, and it's delicious. But they have this exhibition hub there, and that's where they have the Van Gogh experience. And it's not just a museum, it's the experience. And they have, coming up, uh, Tutankhamun, that's how you say it, King Tut, uh, his tomb and treasures. And it's a it's a room and it's educational and and you you have a guide and there's an Egyptologist there and it was a fun interview where we talk about Dor Doraville and its growth and also what's going on at the uh, the uh, Exhibition Hub Art Center. So check that out if you can't listen in Atlanta Saturday nights at seven or whenever it's on because of Georgia football, then you can just grab the podcast the following Monday. All right, I'll shut up now and check out our episode of presents with Henry Zabrowski. Oh yeah, we didn't even mention it. The Atlanta Diner Party? Yes. Check that episode out. Henry was a lot of fun.
Hello. Hello. Hey. Hello. Oh, hey, man. Joining us now from St. Paul and the Broken Bones, Paul Janeway and BJ Honeycutt. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Broen, nice to see you again. Good to see you guys. Are you on yeah, the tour bus? Sorry. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Are you both on the same bus? No, I'm not on the bus right now. I am uh, backstage uh, as, oh, yeah. as, as much. Yeah, we have a show tonight. We play it. Actually, we play in what? An hour? An hour? Like less than an hour? Hour and 15. I'm with us instead of getting ready to thank you. <laughs> can, well, you tell, can you tell how luxurious it is back there in the background how, that he's backstage? I thought he was in a bathroom and I didn't want to say. <laughs> it's fine with me if you are and you just. I he this. might be, actually. Well, the acoustics uh, are great. And they are. But yeah. Backstage eating all the green M and M's. That's that's yes. All the green M and M's are gone. All yes. That's. <laughs> Where are you guys at tonight? Kalamazoo, oh. Michigan. Oh, it's my home state. Just you ever been there? Came back. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what part? Not Kalamazoo. There's not really anything going on there. I, I mean, except for you guys. Uh, we did a VIP thing earlier, and. Uh, and we, they had to let people buy tickets to come see sound check or whatever. And uh, I was like, hey, this is our first time in Kalamazoo. And half of them were like, us too. <laughs> so I, was like, I, I guess they, yes, they try. It's a beautiful theater. It is. It's a beautiful it theater here. So, so I'm not, I, it's never, it's never sucks to uh, play uh, historic theaters. More. Yeah, this is my first time in Kalamazoo playing. For the theater, the theater actually looks like the Fox. Yeah, cool. Nice. A lot like the box. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you guys are on today to talk about uh, your upcoming Atlanta wow. show, Classic City Wrestling at the Eastern. Uh, that is in the, from Zero Mile Presents, Sunday, October fifteenth. I wanted to know is with this with this wrestling event that you guys have coming up in Atlanta, is this something that was your brainchild, or did somebody come to you with it? Well, I've, it's always been a dream of mine to do. Um, the problem is, is I'm not really sure the crossover of wrestling fan to say Paul a broken bones fan, um, <laughs> and we're and we're finding that out right now. So it's an interesting um, crossover. Um, but it's always been a dream of mine to do. Um, we did see, like I think Billy Corgan does it, but yes, he, he owns the NWA. Yeah, he owns the yeah, NWA. He, he does. So like. He does it, but I don't, I mean, that's not really what we do, but, um, we saw there was, there was a band that had classic city wrestling in, uh, at the, uh, 40 watt, I think at Athens. And obviously that got the juices flowing and, and, uh, we thought that that would be a fun opener and just see how it works. It, it's, it's a total experiment. It could be a total disaster, <laughs> but but I think for us, like at this point, it's like doing something fun. And I'm, I'm a huge professional wrestling fan. So it, um, I hope it goes really well. I hope it, I know that I'm just, I'm interested in how it goes off. But there are some logistical issues that we are still facing. So hopefully we get those worked out before showtime. I oh, feel but- like you could make a complete, um, slam dunk if you did a cover of Junkyard Dogs, Grab Them Cakes. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's only probably one band member that would understand what you just said right now. <laughs> That's the problem we face in this band, but I agree with you very much. <laughs> back to that era. You go back to that era, Paul. Do you do you like the it's, it, That's a I do I do. It's a little little before my time. My time was more like the Bret Hart, um, Shawn Michaels, the uh early nineties. I still so we had a um tanning bed movie rental place and and you know you get to pick what you want you know and you, we'd rotate family and everyone hated doing it was my turn because i was going to get a wrestling mm-hmm. tape from the rental place and so i always i always so i got to watch a lot of the old stuff older stuff uh due to due to that rental place so yeah i know junkyard dog and uh Big John Stud, Andre the Giant, all that stuff. So, I, I dig that stuff. But I, I mean, I, I I watch it to this day. So, um, I'm pretty 
pretty well versed in it. Um, but yeah, that's that used to be what I would do is uh, is I would uh, rent rent from the, the the rental store. I'd go over to Jeff's house and uh, on Saturday nights so we could watch uh, Saturday night's main event. Oh man, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah that's uh, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, that was NBC, I think. That was on yep. that was on broadcast television. It was yep. kind of crazy. And they had higher ratings whenever they showed it than SNL did. Well, so but that's always the thing. Like TBS, like Ted Turner, like all those wrestling was such a huge part of their broadcast. Like it brought in huge ratings. The problem was is ad revenue. Like there wasn't a ton of ad, you know, like their ad ad rate was like cut in half or a fourth because people didn't want to be associated with wrestling. But they have to this day, they have some of the best ratings uh on cable television. Um, yeah, Turner let it go. He just he said, "All right, I want this gun. I want to get rid of this. Or I can sell the AOL, <laughs> buy more buffalo. I got a lot. I got a lot of buffalo. I got a <laughs> buffalo to buy. <laughs> buy. Um, it, you know, I feel like they could like combine the idea of the Kart Kardashians and wrestling and make a make a mint. You know, or it could be just put the Kardashians against each other, and then people would tune." In. A lot of, but I would watch that show. But I'd still want you guys to be playing in the background. Yeah. All right, love that one. <laughs> if we could pull that off. Well, listen, I would be the referee. You can have your band there. Um, I would love my real daughters and my former stepdaughters to get in a ring together and fight. You know, I was an Olympian back in the 70s, back when I was a guy. I was an Olympian, and it's fine, you know, because I was really a woman then. I was just, you know, in, in a guy's body. <laughs> Obviously, that would be a profile lifter for us, for sure. Yeah, I think so. About that. It, it, yeah, that, maybe that, we, should, we should invite Ted out to the show in Atlanta. Uh, 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 just come knock on my door. I live above the uh, Ted's downtown across from Verizon. <laughs> <laughs> Where you get a buffalo burger. He's not buying Elton, Elton John's old apartment. Nah, too expensive. <laughs> um, you're playing the Easter. That's a relatively new venue, isn't it? It is. It's uh it's uh we played it I guess a year and a half ago and I think that was one of the I think they uh unfortunately opened it during the pandemic which you know was a, t- a tough time um, to do that. But uh yeah, it's a beautiful place. It really is wonderful. I, I'm glad Atlanta has that. So you guys are, are are just starting your uh uh Angels and Science Fiction tour uh for this album. Um uh, you guys just started yeah we did we just started um what was it bro and four five days four ago, five days ago. It, it was like more because we had a little yeah a little rehearsal time beforehand yeah i really i really like the new album a lot yeah it's awesome yeah. and i'd read that it's yeah i'd read that you said that um a lot of it was inspired by your relationship with your papa and your dad we i've kind of explored through a lot of that with angels of science fiction that one is it's it's more to me it's that one's probably more about you know my wife having a child in 2020, 2020 and us going through that process um but yeah that that's um always kind of a central thing to what to, to the work i do for some reason oh it's your child or your girl little girl she she's turning three in two days so right, congratulations my wife and i had a son in uh 2021 and he, oh okay there yeah and uh, it's, it's yeah it was an adventure in 2020 she was born in september of 2020 oh god and, uh, yeah it, it was, was been crazy in the house days it was a very different <laughs> very different experience than uh most people most people had i think uh, but i mean you know there's just, there's going to be a group of those children like all our classmates are in that same boat yeah so we all had a very similar experience it was just um it was a very interesting time to go through that so but it was a you know it was a beautiful thing but it was it was it was fascinating like when they did the first like you know uh heartbeats on the ground whatever i could go in that and that was all just kind of wild that is so crazy it's great didn't your wife didn't didn't your wife uh go through childbirth with a mask on all the way yeah she she pushed for four hours with a mask on Mm -hmm. Um, so i was like wow (laughs) <laughs> it was impressive. She's been great, you know. She, she's she's been it's been a adjustment, obviously, to her. I mean, being a dad, I mean, bro, I can we can attend us to it. Yeah, it's weird. Paul, I worked at this place in Cabbage Town, which is 
a little neighborhood in downtown Atlanta. It was called, it's still there. It's still called Mary Todd hairdressing. And, uh, this was in between radio jobs. And when yeah, I get fired from radio, I, you know, I fall very far, uh, pizza places and whatnot, but I don't mind. Cause that's, you know, how I, you know, I hustle. So I'm working at this place and we were always, they were always playing really cool, eclectic music, uh, sometimes video channels and stuff. And I remember listening and, you know, hearing, hearing the music playing in the background. I turned around and went, Oh, that guy's singing that. And it's not a salt. It's just like such powerful, awesome friggin' music. But that's where I got, uh, turned on to you guys. And, uh, you know, later on, I think Dustin, I don't believe you ever told us. Like right at first, Dustin didn't tell us your connection to the band, right? No, he, he, no. and I, I brought it. I brought it up, and you were like, "Wait," huh? and you, I could see the connection in your face. Yeah, I was like I know who they are. <laughs> but uh, it was just such such an amazing thing to see. And working there, the reason I kind of bring it up is because radio doesn't exist as a format to promote anything new musically. Maybe one or two stations here or there, depending on what market you're in, where you are regionally. But overall, no. So it's Spotify, it's YouTube, it's iTunes. You guys know more than I do. But to watch these these videos up there, these live performances, and I think it was in some sort of factory. Where was that? That was actually in Birmingham, uh, if it's the one I'm thinking of. In Birmingham, mm -hmm. uh, there's an old theater. and They actually did it. But they, we were there before they did the renovation. They let us in hand before they did the renovation. So it looks like a Bondo theater. Yeah, but it was so cool. It was so cool. And, and I love that that's the way you get introduced to music accidentally, or you get now, you know, an algorithm go, why don't you listen to this? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll listen to this. But when you discover something that you were unfamiliar with and you enjoy it, that's always a treasure. So I'm nice. I'm happy that that still exists. And speaking of the stones, like that new song they put out, you guys have opened for them. The stones, uh, put out a new song, uh, last week called uh, Angry off their upcoming album. Does, does that sound to me, you guys like a Stone song? Because it sure does to me. It's It sounds it sounds a little bit more uh, uh, modern than I'm used to hearing them sound. Yeah. The yep. sound like the, the production's a little bit more. It's correct. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, I feel like there's some pitch correction and stuff like that, but um, the production is a little, is a little bit modern. I don't know. It's just strange to hear a modern Stone song. Right. Video good though, right? Video good. Yeah. Well, I mean, I love I love the fact that they're just like, hey, let's let's get a, a pretty girl in a car and there's our video. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> like uh so they worked for Wicked Snake. Let's do it for her. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Uh I I do have something to tell you about that video that you watched of us, uh Tim. Yeah. Um Paul did he, we shot that video in the lobby of the the lyric like he was saying but um there were no monitors for paul so he's singing like and he couldn't hear himself so everything he sings he can't hear and that's in that video and i always thought that was really impressive that is impressive and you can't tell you know, when you just hear paul's hear voice paul's i just assumed he was um huh? i'm sorry i said when i heard paul's voice singing you know and then saw him i just assumed like he was raised like the jerk or something <laughs> <laughs> well uh no i was um I, I i uh i just grew up in rural alabama and uh and grew up like singing and and uh you know uh i call it fun church but a little more charismatic speaking in tongues and and that's just how you did things. You know, I didn't even think about how, I didn't even know how I sounded until I was probably 18, 19. Um, I'd never heard my voice recorded, so I didn't really know. So well, I killed it. Have you at our church? <laughs> <laughs> same church. I mean, I did the same thing. It was all speaking in tongues. You fall out in the spirit, all that right. stuff. My step grandpa was the preacher and, and everything. But our, whenever they said, who are we going to come up and have sing, you're like, oh, God. Yeah, it's always terrible. <laughs> Not me. That, that, there was there was some there was some like that. Uh, I had a pastor that really wanted to keep me humble though, because he could tell I liked performing, so he he wouldn't let me sing lead too often. Um, so I never really thought that that was a that was a career path for me. Um, well, certainly, so, yes, you know, yeah, it, it has. No, I'm, I'm crazy. You know, my mom, I listen to religious music, and then my mom would only let me listen to like. Like a sprinkling of soul stuff, like Otis Redding and Sam Cooke, and there's a seventies group called the Stylistics, and 
That's yeah. I just did I just didn't know any better. You know what I mean? Like I didn't grow up on the Beatles or the Who or any of that stuff. Like I I didn't listen to that till I was in my twenties. And uh, Third Eye Blind. Yeah, Third Eye Blind. <laughs> uh, better than Ezra. You know, all, yeah. all you know um, staples. Staples. No, uh, I so I didn't listen to any of that stuff till till I was much older. So that's. That's just kind of what I didn't think anything about it. And then, you know, it starts becoming a thing. You know what I mean? And uh, I think it's funny. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting dynamic for sure. Now on, uh, I, I, of course, being, you know, us being on YouTube and I'm on there a lot, I see a lot of reaction videos and you guys have racked up the reaction videos over the last few <laughs> years. Uh, some of which are, um, uh, nuts uh, but w- what are you <laughs> what are what have, what do you guys ever watch them do you guys ever sit you know sit and and and, and see what all these people are uh are saying i mean for me yeah. uh i try not to um you know because I, I get you know you're like it's it's one of those things you 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 really want to feel bad about yourself go read some youtube comments yeah. or something you know um well, the majority of them are the majority of them are are just flat out impressed. I mean, more so than 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 ragging. I'm good to know. Yeah, I'm good I mean, to they're, know. It's good to know. Impressed. Some of us, Dustin, are attracted to reading the horrible things, so we can feel bad, like we have always felt. <laughs> that is that is <laughs> that that's that me. Is <laughs> uh, I will I will probably find the one negative thing said or or written. So that's why I try my best to stay away because it'll uh it'll it'll gnaw at me. Um, I'm better about it now. Um. I had one person tell me one time, I look like Roger Ebert, sound like Ray Charles. And I was like, <laughs> what? I was like, hey. I was like, uh, <laughs> I like half of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ebert, Roger Ebert was right? amazing. <laughs> yeah. I love Roger Ebert. Thumbs up. I, I, no one was like, oh, that's a good looking man, man. <laughs> no, I said, well, I love oh, Roger man. Ebert, but. Uh, I always think it looks like Dustin. (laughs) 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 You're always told you look like your brother. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. I'm actually totally okay with that. Yeah, Yeah. it's just it's just funny. So I I I had to learn early on to get a little get a little thick skin, but I I think I've watched one or two of the reaction things, and yeah, it's always it's always kind of nice. I I don't know. It's it's always interesting to me when when those things are. I mean, that just seems like such a a weird world to someone's reacting to 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 the yeah. videos. But but it's it's um it's flattering, I think. Reaction videos are in general are strange things. Like that you're literally watching someone react to a thing that, like, I don't understand why we should care. But um, <laughs> but I don't I don't think I've watched any of the reaction videos i've seen them but in the um in youtube but i haven't I haven't watched any of them um as long as people still girls one like cup. as long as they keep well what was that you said it started with two girls one cup and it's all about that. <laughs> that's 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 great company oh, to teach for us it really is yeah it is that's basically our crowd that's <laughs> that's, 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 yeah, that's really girls. i'm just saying hey, that's the time i've ever watched people watching something and then generally being interested in, in how they reacted to it. It's that quick. <laughs> it, I mean, it, and reaction videos do have that connotation of, it, it seems like it would be a repository for the negative, but by far, it is, it, a repository for the oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> but it is by far like it boosts it, it to me. I mean, I watch them. You know, I watch them because of you guys. It's like, hey, let me right. let me listen and see what people think. And and I'm it's, so it's, impressed with how many people just are flabbergasted cool. by the by the musicianship of you guys and just the guitar players that are on there that are just you know looking at what you're playing and just you know freaking out over you know how good you you know that Rowan plays or how good you sing. And it it makes me proud, you know, to see people you know really enjoy it. And I like seeing that on a one-on-one basis as opposed to, I mean, I could watch any of your videos and watch a crowd of people that paid to see you and know who you are, see you guys. But to see somebody who has no idea who you are and get that initial reaction is is impressive to me. Yeah, it's, yeah. Fun, to, yeah. It, it's fun to see if, if you're really into something 
and it's fun to see somebody experience it for the first time. Yes. I agree with that. And that is, it's, I think that's the one issue with like, you know, playing for so long is you don't, you, you don't get that as much, um, at shows because people know, you know what I mean? Everybody knows all the words to every sound. Yeah. They, but you've built the reputation. But, so, but also, also like, if you watch the reaction video, you have, uh, that means I also have to listen to our song again, again. <laughs> yeah. True. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that, you know, is like torture. Like nails on a chalkboard, so I can watch it on mute. <laughs> but I just want to say I, I love you guys. I I live blues rock anyway, but I really like the way that you guys have kind of pivoted. Um, it's mm-hmm. such a different sound. I love Alien Coast so much. I've worn it out. Ghost and Smoke is my shit. I fucking love that song so much. And Minotaur. I mean, just the whole album is so great. And it's like. Um, like Chris Stapleton and Thundercat had a baby. I love it. And that's a, uh, I'll take that any day of the week. <laughs> uh, that's great. Thank you so much. So I would, uh, are you guys going to continue on this path? Do you think? I don't know. I think we're, I think we're actually, I think the band's kind of in a way hitting the reset button in a lot of ways because we kind of, for some reason, you know, it's, it's funny. Like we've said this on stage on this tour, but it is, it's true. Like this, like we did, we just got done, you know, with Angels and Science Fiction. You know, we had Alien Coast and Angels. And now it feels like the end of an era of some sort. Not the end of the band, but whatever we were climaxing to, whatever we were trying to achieve, I feel like we in some way creatively achieved that. So I don't know what we're, I don't know what's next. I think we have a little bit of an idea because we've gotten together, written a little bit, but it's, I definitely think that the reset button has been hit. Um, and I don't know what that means. You know what I mean? So I, 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 I we're still thinking. I, 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 I can say that we're, we're riding in a room with each other for the first time in a long while. Mm-hmm. Because there for, for a, for a minute, we, we were just so busy and traveling so much that we, we would do demos and put them in a Dropbox folder. And then we would sort of flesh them out and then we would get together and, before we went to the studio to to sort of learn our own songs and then go into the studio and do it, and now we're we're doing that a little differently. So that part of it feels a little different, but um, yeah. Also, also I can I I think we you know we learned so many lessons going through like angels or uh, angels and science fiction with Alien Coast too that that are still with us and I don't think would go anywhere uh, necessarily, but um, yeah. I don't know. It, it is. It does feel like kind of a different, like just a transition, you know. For sure. I think you should do a dance album. You know, like maybe get <laughs> maybe get Anderson Pac involved. Get some get some hip hop samples. Oh. <laughs> well, I, I am releasing uh, some solo work, so I don't know if that'll be the route to go. But I am. <laughs> I am. I am. Uh, I am in the midst of that. Um, releasing a solo work. Or you're gonna go Natalie Murphy on everybody. Oh, wow, Jesus. love us. Yeah. What was that? <laughs> See, I knew you're you're gonna big time, I'm aren't you? You're gonna go Natalie Murphy and put out Tiger Lily too, and then that's call it a day, right? That's it. No, no, that that is that is not the. I would obviously, if that was my plan, bro, it would be on his call. So I'm gonna be bad with the. <laughs> You're welcome uh, to come back by yourself, though, when, yeah, when you have the solo album out. Let me it's not a solo album. I, 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 I hadn't heard anything about it. <laughs> this is the first thing he's heard about it. Oh, no. This is your Destiny's Child moment. Bro, this one is going to be a cappella. <laughs> it's going to be a cappella. No, we're, uh, no, we are, we're, what, what we hope, you know, it's like anything, man. The hope is, uh, it is for St. Paul, the Brooklyn Bones, kind of the rising tide of salt ships. That's what we hope. You, know, yeah. you just don't know. I used to be in third eye blind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were the third eye red box. Uh, yeah, but that's okay. They kicked me out. I'm fine with it. I don't care. I'm just listening. I'm sorry I interrupted your interview. <laughs> this is a new one for me. I'm going to be honest. With you. Yeah. You had an interview. You haven't been on an interview with a troll puppet that used to live in a red box outside of a CBS? Hell hey, no, no, I have. This is the first. <laughs> I have a cousin who lived in the one that was outside of a Kroger, but he got run over by a shopping cart. 
But I did, you guys. I also worked at a barbershop. No, you didn't. <laughs> well, I'm sort of, sort of based on this guy. But anyway, <laughs> I dig your music. Oh, I'm glad to you. Well, I appreciate and if you put out a solo album, I would go buy it at Criminal oh. Records. That would be great, too. Would Same be with you, uh, brown guy, brown man. <laughs> Browen. 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 <laughs> brown. Do you have any uh, embarrassing stories about Dustin, Browen? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Do I have any any, any embarrassing stories about Dustin? Yeah. Uh, Wait, before you get to that, Paul, what was it like growing up on Star Trek? <laughs> oh, my God, you're a fucking nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you were trapped in the Delta Quadrant. But oh, my I'm God. On the I, can always, I can always smell it when someone... That's the only time I... It, that someone knows the Janeway thing. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, Star Trek. Who would win when Dustin and Brown would wrestle? Oh, oh I'm Dustin. Dustin, for oh. sure. Dustin, listen, this is, uh, Dustin was seven years, it is seven years older than me. Um, and uh, was always way bigger than me. Uh, but I don't, you know, no, no really embarrassing stories. Uh, as embarrassing as it got was that he went through a cure phase and would wear makeup and, and perm his hair out. Phase? Hey, um, what are you talking about phase? Well, I said he's still in, <laughs> he's in just in the later, he's in the later phase. Yeah. Jeff phase. did that too. Jeff Lebo was a cure. He, he went through a phase. The cure yeah, phase. Yeah, I mean, and, and I probably would have done it too. I mean, honestly... Not really. No embarrassing stories. If 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 there are embarrassing stories, I've blocked them all. <laughs> <laughs> My brother the cult. Your brother's in a cult, Red Box. That's no, he's still down. Going to cult. <laughs> her, their whole thing was to jump into small ponds and see how long I could hold her breath. And it's really sad. I'm sorry to even bring him. Bring him up. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't go through a cure phase. I went through a depeche mode phase. Yeah. That's not a bad phrase either. I know for you guys. Wait a minute, that's um that's Joy Division. I ain't really listening to them. You were bringing to Brodsky B Red Box Stroke. I was in the Brodsky B and the Communard. So shut up. <laughs> I didn't know where you're going with that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you play any cover songs in your shows? Or actually yes. he's doing we're doing a lot of covers and well, not a lot of, but we put um I there's a few songs. That I've always wanted to do in the set. So this is kind of the tour that I got to do it. Um, Wichita Lineman. No. Nice. Um, and uh, Jeff Buckley's Lover, You Should Have Come Over. Cool. So so you they're, they're, they're talking about the dolphin. <laughs> the dolphin cry? No. Uh, I've been uh, looking for the dolphin in the city. <laughs> you know that one? No, I don't. Sometimes I think about yeah, Saturday child. <laughs> you hire me, I could sing. Yeah. You could definitely be an interesting act. Sure. <laughs> you guys still <laughs> never you guys still throwing in any weights? You guys did uh, what, you guys did it rain on me? I think I was the only or right, make, make it rain and make it rain. Make it rain. Make it rain. Right yeah. We we would uh you know what's funny is we did that so early on. We did it so much early on that we don't do it much anymore. We'll throw it out there every once in a while, um, as long as we're in places the right key. Yeah. Shove up. <laughs> nah, nah. I played it once. Okay, look, we were in Australia, and I looked at Jesse, and I was like, what key is this in? And he, and it wasn't Jesse's fault. He, he told me the right key, but when he told me the key, I like regurgitated onto my fretboard as a half step below that oh Whew. so i started I, I, I like i like went into it at, you know and uh everybody was good enough this was the the thing this was the thing everybody was good enough to 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 understand that i that i started at a half step off and go into it a half step lower oh well, they transpose where cool. i where yeah. i screwed up was i realized it and everybody was fine. I looked around. I was like, oh, God, I started this in the wrong key. We're in the wrong key. I get on the talk back mic on stage. And I'm like, everybody go up to the right key when we stop. And when they did that, it was like, I, I mean, it's hard to describe, man. It's like somebody just sucked your brains out of your ears. <laughs> it was like just like a hard rock song that goes from like, like B to C. 
Like, oh, just it was. Oh my god, <laughs> the, the it was. We were we were trucking right along. And there was a there was a dialogue between band members on the on the uh, fog back mics, you know, which audiences can hear. And so we were. I, I had had we had enough forethought, we just said, "Stay in the key, stay in the key, stay in the key." But I can't. I don't even. Know, I think it was Alan though that was like, "No, no, no, let's move it up. Let's go. Let's go to the right key." No, I, oh, man, that I was definitely on that train too. At that shift. When we changed that key, the, it just like the audience. Wow, oh, what the fuck is this? Uh, yeah, <laughs> but the thing is, like, and we, we just oh, the low. Oh, if we didn't let it alone, it would have been embarrassing. It would have been my fault, and I would have been like, "Sorry, guys," and moved on. But because we moved it up that to the correct key, everybody in the tent, like five thousand people. <laughs> Definitely knew something. Was wrong. <laughs> Just be- befuddled looks on their face. They're really like, that's, that's not cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's not how music. That's not how music is supposed to go. Uh, the uh, way. Well, like, it was not a thing. It was not. It was not musical. And uh, yeah, you know, Oct- October fifteenth. St. Paul, the Broken Bones <laughs> at the Eastern with uh, a wrestling experiment then this is i can't wait to uh to see how this how this rolls out it's uh it ought to be an interesting evening to say the least <laughs> you guys will be there, there right yeah. i hope my wife let you go we will be there i don't i shouldn't say that yes i would love to hey <laughs> listen bring bring gilbert and uh red box <laughs> i i have to keep the red box here at work because he's kind of scares my son or he'll hit it the one time I interacted with him, he punched it in the face. I know that's right, Gilbert. Put your ass out of it. I'm just saying, that makes sense, you know? It's a troll. Does it live under your desk? Uh, well, he has the mind of his own when I'm not here. God knows what he does. I think he goes up to the TV station and tries to do the weather or something. I think you should wrestle the troll at their show. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, <laughs> well, it's been awesome meeting you, and thanks for coming on our show. And and bro, and it's good to talk with you again. And you also good did my you. you also did my uh, podcast or radio show slash podcast the podcast, which people can go find on a podcatcher if they so desire. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much for having us. Nice good luck on the rest of the rest of the tour. I know you're yeah. touring for another couple months now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So thank y'all. Hopefully, if we can go to the show, we get to meet you. So that would be nice to actually. Absolutely, we'd love. Oh, we'd love that. Good All luck. Right, yeah, break break your leg tonight. Yeah, hey, thank you. y'all very much. Yep. Thank y'all. Thanks, All right, guys. Thanks, guys. Right. Bye bye. I did watch the first episode of the Continental Man. You guys, that was good. I, I liked, liked it. it. I haven't watched it yet. I'm saving it. And uh, you want to watch all of them, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I liked it. I, I'm loving that show, the the One Piece. Oh yeah, yeah. One, one Piece was awesome. I burned through it all, like all immediately. I got to watch that too. So. You'll like it, Tim, a lot. I'm telling Nami, you, Nami is so hot. All right, let's do our staff picks real quick. I'll start. Uh, the Rabot Rebuild. Rabot Rebuild is a reanimated collaboration of the first episode of Adult Swim's Aqua Teen Hunger Force, not Aqua Teen Aqua Teen Hunger Force, and it's it's the first episode of Aqua Teen. 40 different styles of animation and uh, 20 years since the episode was officially released. This is not done by Adult Swim. This is complete fan service stuff. And These are those guys that do the podcast, right? Yeah. Well, no, they're involved with them. Oh, okay. But it's not the uh, it's not uh, um, Dancing is Forbidden specifically, but uh, it was so brilliant to just see these I'm sure they're all young people and, and older people too, but younger people who are into the show that came out a long ass time ago. So they did a great job and I want to plug them and they're on uh, YouTube. So if you go in and just type in Rabot, R-A-B-B-O-T, Rebuilt, um, you can check it out. When, I'm sure we'll have a link uh, in, in the notes also. So that's mine. Mine is uh, Jim Downey, former Saturday Night Live writer on Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend This Week. Real good he's episode. Awesome. He's a good Yeah, he's hilarious. And tons of great Norm stories, like backstage dealings outside Night Live when Norm yeah. got fired and stuff. I wish Conan was the host of Fly on the Wall because Conan doesn't interrupt. <laughs> yeah, or at least moderate it. Let him. Let him be. Yeah. Um, let's see. Mine is uh, starts on Netflix, uh, starring 
um, Cumberbatch. It is called uh, The Wonderful Story of Henry Sugar. Um, it's a show about a guy who gains superpowers, and he's got to learn how to uh, manage them. Um, and it's kind of a dramedy uh, set. Wes Anderson, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Wes Anderson. He's doing all these rolled doll stories. This is the first one he's doing. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's and it and it looks pretty good. So, and I, I always thought Cumberbatch was hilarious. I mean, when he wants to be funny, he can be really funny. So, I thought it'd be good. And it's on Netflix. And by the way, I checked out that the wrestler show on Netflix. That first thing, yeah, it's depressing. It's but not bad. Pretty well done. Well done, but sad. Yeah, I agree. Um, uh, mine is season five of Glow Up on Netflix, and it's just like this makeup artist show that I love. I was so excited when I've. Opened up Netflix, I was like, holy shit, finally, back. But yeah, nothing any of the three of you would ever watch in a million trillion years. But certainly something I'm sure Autumn is watching. Aren't, aren't there British people begging stuff on TV somewhere? No, not right now. <laughs> not right now, son. You know, I got my Halloween baking championship, but no, no there's no, no British people baking anything right now. Or there's nobody making things with metal or blowing glass or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. I know, it sucks. Um, one more thing I wanted to mention is the Harlan Highway. We talk about, I mean, more than TV now, I'm, I'm watching a lot of podcasts. I talk about Dudesy, which I like, I think is very funny, but Harlan Highway is always a treat. Um, I didn't feel like watching Theo Vaughn talk to, uh, uh, RFK Jr. for an hour and a half. So, uh, yacht march. <laughs> uh, yeah, as I do. <laughs> so you got vaxxed, right? You got. Y- y- y'all back got backs. No, uh, Harlan Highway this week is Fred Armisen on it, and it is the most surreal, out there, bizarro, fun time that you can have anywhere on the internet right now. Um, it's very funny at times. Some nice musical breaks. Yeah, but <laughs> it, am I wrong about it being the surreal, weird, but not in a bad way, just fucking fantastic. So if you like that kind of thing, check it out. Harlan's already... But, They're both weirdos, so... Yes, and... Yeah. uh it's it's a lot of fun if you're into that kind of thing. All right, Steph, what's going on at Barkville? Uh, this Sunday, we'll be at Caffeine and Octane out in Kennesaw. So come out and see us. We'll be there from 9 a.m. to noon. Um, I may or may not be there with mine. I don't know if she's quite ready for it yet because there's a lot of loud noises and whatnot. But uh, she is making leaps and bounds. Leela is kicking ass. She's fully integrated with the whole crew, playing with her awesome. toys, living it up. I'm taking her to Petco. She's she's getting there. So anyway, um, yeah. So come out to Caffeine and Octane. But uh, more than anything, please give us your money. Please go to BarkvilleDogRescue.org. Give us your money. Whatever money you have, give it to us. We need it. Do, do a birthday fundraiser. Do a birthday yeah. fundraiser like my wonderful friend Jeff or the great Dustin. We really appreciate that. So thank you very much because we, we're, we're pretty broke. We need some money. Do that. And if you have extra money and you want to give it to me, you can go to Cameo and put it in at Tim Andrews here and I'll do a Cameo for you, which means I'll do it in a voice, but I'm not going to do the whole video thing. You have to get my ugly mug. Um, but that's where it is. Cam, uh, Cameo uh, app or Cameo.com at Tim Andrews here. Uh, uh, before we go, make sure that if you're watching this on YouTube and you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, if you are subscribed already, like it. And uh, share it with your friends and, and turn on all the bells and whistles. And if you're on Spotify, or iTunes, but if you're on Spotify, leave us a review. We are going to start reading them again as soon as we remember to call them. And uh, we used to have a lot of fun with that at the end of the show, just reading them in voices. Maybe the Redbox Troll will read it for you. By the way, if you go to Cameo, Redbox Troll's on there as well. Uh, he will do a video for you. I just am too lazy to do a promo video for it, but I will. Thanks to our guests tonight. Uh, I hope I didn't offend Paul when I brought in the red box troll, but I it was too irresistible of me to know. Didn't you like growing up in Star Trek? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that's our show this week. Uh, please remember to keep it in. <laughs>